According to Huygens principle we know that every point on the wave front AB is a source of secondary wavelet plane wave front so plane wave front is this one the source for this plane wave front is a source which is at infinite distance when the source is at larger distance we get a plane wave front sin i by sin r is equal to bc by ac divided by ae divided by ac 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 gets cancelled and we remain with bc divided by ae Hello everyone. Welcome to session 1 of chapter 10 wave optics. This is Swati from Department of Physics with the Ashram Pri University College, the Temple of Excellence Mysuru. Previously, we have studied about the concepts of ray optics where we had study about the rectilinear propagation of light and its properties. So in this chapter we shall study about how the light is exhibiting its wave nature so we shall brush up few important things which are under introduction part that is we have already studied about the properties of light that is rectilinear propagation which means light travels in a straight line we have also studied about reflection refraction interference diffraction and polarization in the chapter called ray optics we have we have studied about only about the reflection and refraction and here by taking the concepts of interference diffraction and polarization we are going to understand the wave nature of light so before understanding the wave nature of light let us now know about the evolution of this wave theory that is from huygens wave theory starting from huygens wave theory how does this wave theory developed and it is accepted so what is this huygens wave theory so this theory is proposed and developed by a scientist called christian huygens so according to huygens light is propagated in the form of waves it is not a particle according to him it's a form of wave and that too it's it's a kind of longitudinal wave so it explains the concepts of reflection refraction interference and diffraction but it could not explain the theory of polarization polarization is also a property of light but christians huygens wave theory could not explain the polarization so this theory was modified and the drawback that is it could not explain the theory of polarization and this drawback was overcome by a thomas young who suggested that the light waves were transverse wave but not longitudinal if it is longitudinal waves then it must also uh, explain about the polarization so thomas young demonstrated an experiment and he showed that light waves are transverse but not longitudinal and he performed this famous interference experiment in the year 1801 so what is the outcome of this experiment so the, now the nature of light according to thomas young it is transverse in nature which requires material medium for its propagation how then the light could travel in vacuum so this question was answered by maxwell's electromagnetic theory so according to maxwell's electromagnetic theory the light waves are changing electric and magnetic fields electromagnetic theory says that the radiations or the light rays are changing electric and magnetic fields he also predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves from wave equation and it describes the law of electromagnetism which we have already studied about these things in our first part of physics and it also could help to calculate the speed of electromagnetic waves in space so this electromagnetic theory could successfully explain reflection refraction interference diffraction as well as polarization so this is the basic introduction about the evolution of wave theory let us now understand huygens wave theory so to understand this huygens wave theory we need to understand few terms which are related with that and first term is wave front very important term to understand in the concepts of wave optics what is a wave front it is nothing but the locus of points which oscillates in the same phase you can see with this example it is very easy to understand from this so a wave front is nothing but the locus of point which oscillates in the same phase so if observe a spiral waves and we can observe the locus of points that oscillates in same phase so we will call it as wave front in 
physics language. So, what is the speed of wave according to Huygens wave theory? So, it is nothing but it is the speed with which the wave front moves out towards the source. Say for example, there is a production of wave front, then what is the speed of this wave front that moves outside the source is called as speed of wave. Now, we came to know what is a wave front and speed of wave. Let us understand the types of wave fronts. It's a very important question examination point of view. So, what are the types of wave fronts? There are three types of wave fronts. One is the spherical wave front. How does it form? The source for the spherical wave front is a point source which is at finite distance. The next one is cylindrical wave front. So, you can see here cylindrical wave front. This is how it will be and the source for the cylindrical wave front is linear source. So, point source looks like this and the linear source gives rise to cylindrical wave front. And the third one is plane wave front. So, plane wave front is this one. The source for this plane wave front is a source which is at infinite distance. When the source is at larger distance, we get a plane wave front. Now, understanding the terms of these uh, important concepts, we shall study about the Huygens principle. So, the first principle says that every point of the wave front is a source of secondary wavelets. You can see here, every point of the wave front, every point of the wave front is a source of secondary wavelet. Say for example, if this is the point of wave front, this is the source of secondary wavelet and this is for the next wavelet and this is for next wavelet. So, every point on the wave front is the source of secondary wavelet is the first Huygens principle. And the next one says that these secondary wavelets spread out in all the direction with the speed of wave. Let us now derive an important expression that is law of refraction of light with the help of Huygens wave theory. So, what is law of refraction of light? It is nothing but the Snell's law which is given by n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r. Now, we have to derive this expression with the help of Huygens wave theory. For that, I have considered a surface. I will call it as P, P dash. It is the surface which separates two medium. I will call it as medium 1 and this is medium 2. Now, V1 be the speed of light in medium 1 and V2 be the speed of light in medium 2. So, let us consider a plane wave front AB that is incident on P, P dash surface in medium 1 at an angle I. So, say for example, this is the incident wave front. So, I will call it as A and B and this is the normal. This is angle of incidence. So, now this is called as incident wave front. So, we are using Huygens wave theory to derive the expression of Snell's law that is n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r. According to Huygens principle, we know that every point on the wave front AB is a source of secondary wavelet, which means let the secondary wavelet. So, when the secondary wavelet strikes at P dash, we will call it as C point C which is equal to V1 T that is the distance traveled which is equal to speed into time. V1 is the velocity of medium 1 at a time T. So, we will call it as V1 into T. Now, the wavelet from A will travel a distance V2 into T. I will call it as V2 into T. It travels a distance V2 into T as radius. Let us draw an arc in medium 2. Say for example, I am drawing an arc here in medium 2. So, now this AE is nothing but V2 into T which means I will call this point as E. So, that is nothing but the distance travelled by the wave front A that is equal to V2 into T. AE is equal to V2 into T. Now, a tangent from C touches an arc E. So, this is a tangent from C that touches an arc E and C E is the tangential surface. So, you can see here the C E is nothing but the tangential surface and it is also called as the refracted wave front. As it touches all the secondary wavelets, it is also called as refracted wave front. 
since it is refracted wavefront we also know that this is angle of refraction because it is in medium to this will be r and this will be my i and this will be my r again because it is in second medium now from this diagram we can understand angle b a c is equal to i which means the angle of incidence and angle e c a you can see here e c a which is nothing but r which means the angle of refraction now consider triangle b a c consider triangle b a c from this sin i is equal to b c divided by a c and from triangle e c a you can see here we have triangle e c a from this we can define sin r so sin r is nothing but a e divided by a c now let us divide these two we get sin i by sin r is equal to b c by a c divided by a e divided by a c a c a c gets cancelled and we remain with b c divided by a e but what is b c from the figure we know that b c is equal to v1 into t a e is v2 into t so we can substitute that we will get v1 t divided by v2 into t and t t gets cancelled will remain with v1 divided by v2 for a refractive index of a medium we know the expression n is equal to c divided by v but in the previous expression we have the terms called v so we shall replace that by the term n so how to replace by rearranging this expression we get v is equal to c divided by n now in this expression c is nothing but the speed of light in vacuum now v1 becomes c divided by n1 and v2 becomes c divided by n2 so what happens to this equation now sin i divided by sin r is equal to in the place of v1 we have c divided by n1 so we can write it as c divided by n1 into sin r is nothing but n2 divided by c because it will become the reciprocal now c and c gets cancelled and we remain with sin i divided by sin r is equal to n2 divided by n1 or we can cross multiply these two terms to get the equation n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r which is nothing but the law of refraction or a snell's law so with the help of huygens wave theory and the assumptions made by uh, huygens or the postulates given by huygens we can arrive at the law of refraction by considering this method now we shall derive the law of reflection that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection with the help of huygens wave theory so for that i have considered a reflecting surface that is mn consider mn as a reflecting surface ab is an incident wave front ce is a reflected wave front because we have not considered the refracting medium here so here the surface is considered as reflecting surface so ce is a reflected wave front what is n generally it is nothing but the refractive index of the medium i is nothing but the angle of incidence since it is normal so this is an incident wave front i is an angle of incidence r is angle of reflection because ce is the reflected ray and r is the angle of reflection so the speed of wave is given by the term called v so again by considering the huygens wave theory we are arriving at an expression for law of reflection that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection for that we shall consider a plane wave front ab that is incident at an angle i on the reflecting surface mn you can look at the diagram ab is an incident wave front which is incident on a reflecting surface mn at an angle i what is according to huygens wave theory as we all know that every point on the wave front ab is a source of secondary wavelet so now the reflected ray from b strike the surface at point c because it's a source of secondary wavelet so the secondary wavelet from b strike the surface mn at c in time t and we can call this bc as v into t because it travel with the speed of v and it takes time t to strike the surface so it is v into t then we can write bc is equal to v into t the secondary wavelet from a will travel the same distance v in time t again the same time is taken by a so with a as center and vt as radius we shall draw an r so here 
with C as center, Vt as radius, we shall draw an arc at E. Then this AE becomes Vt. We know Vc also is equal to Vt and AE is also equal to Vt. Now CE is nothing but the tangential surface and it is also called as reflected wave front. In the previous condition, we have discussed about the refracted wave front, but here it is the tangential surface as well as it is a reflected wave front. Now from the figure angle AEC, which is equal to angle ABC. Again, they both are at 90 degree. So angle AEC is equal to angle ABC which is equal to 90 degree. So from the figure we can write this. What else is common in this AE and BC which is equal to V into T which means we have common surfaces. Therefore we can even say that triangle AEC and triangle ABC are congruent triangles. Since they are congruent triangles, we can say that angle ECA which is equal to angle BAC. So look at this ECA which is equal to BAC. So angle ECA can be written as I that is incident angle and angle BAC is equal to R that is reflected angle. So from this we can write angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection which is nothing but the law of reflection and hence it is proved. So in this session we have learnt about the basics of wave optics. Also we have learnt about Huygens principle, Huygens theory of explanation for wave optics. Also we have derived an expression for law of reflection and refraction with the help of Huygens principle. In the upcoming session we shall study about some more interesting concepts. See you all in the next session. Until keep learning all of you. Thank you.